Okay, this is going to be a little demonstration, um, just real simple stuff, um, best case scenario, um, platoon squad attack. Um, so this is what it should look like and what should happen. Now, like I said, it's all MET-T dependent. So, <clears throat> first of all, you get intel that you have uh, an infantry unit that, um, enemy infantry unit that has set up base, um, a little patrol base or something, or for the night or whatever. So, you move on this position, you take up a um, base of fire here, and then you send your flanking unit around to their other side. Now, what this um, base of fire is going to do is lay a base of fire, constant, just over surmountable shit ton of lead flying downrange. Um, and they're going to make it seem as hectic, hectic as possible. 240s, SALs, ARs, um, 203s, grenades, whatever to seem like hell is raining down on their very position. Um, now, what should be happening is that everything's all jumbled up here, that they're gonna, their main focus is going to be on this, um, on your base of fire here. So, your flanking unit should have already been in position before you even started um, laying a base of fire. So, say you're just knocking people out left and right here. Say there's an enemy machine gun nest there that's taken out. Um, and you're just destroying the shit out of this place. So, remember this is all best case scenario. And now they're concentrating all their forces maybe leaving a couple people here but they're sending reinforcements back to these positions or they're beating feet so the enemy's getting out or they're sending more reinforcements over here um, they might leave a couple people here to so their flanks not exposed as much um, but what should happen is that they're so overwhelmed that they either get killed or start retreating basically so um, let, me, let me erase some stuff here so say that all this enemy positions have been wiped out And what they these guys do is your flanking unit. Once they start laying down base of fire, and when they give you guys the go ahead, that this flanking unit is going to be moving up. While they're moving up, they're going to be laying down a base of fire also while on the move. So whether there's enemy troops moving back this way moving you know beating feet up there whichever this unit is going to be your flanking unit is going to be moving towards the enemy position now once they hit a certain point they should your flanking unit should relay their position back to your base fire um, relay communication saying, you know, shift fire where your either shift fire where they shift all their concentrated fire to the left above the enemy position to either take out um, squirters or something that have run north of their position. Um, or just to keep that base of fire going um, to not let up their reign of terror. Um, so they're either going to shift their fire 
or completely cease fire all the, all together. So these oh shit. These troops will be moving up and through the enemy position. Making ensuring the enemy has been eliminated and out of the positions and once they reach that a certain point they're gonna call out that they are set that they have reached through their um, through the enemy position now what your other that and once they reach the certain position, they're going to set up a base fire, get online, and um, start pulling security, either re-engaging the enemy that has retreated or just staying there, making sure everything's okay. Now, these guys are going to be looking out, and this stuff's, the guys on the ends here are going to be concentrated in this direction, out at an angle and then stuff like that. So once they're set, these this unit is gonna be moving forward also. So there, it's gonna be a crisscross pattern through the enemy position. Now once they have pushed through the enemy position and ensuring um, all the enemy has been either eliminated or captured, um, everything's taken control of. Now they're going to set up at the edge of there and then just basically reposition themselves as the enemy did. Pulling security out here, all over the place. Just like that. So once they reach that point, squad leaders or team leaders or whatever um, should be assessing casualties whether it's their own or the enemy's. Um, if there's any casualties, KIA, um, POWs, how much food and water and ammo that their guys have. And that's a whole nother set of um, set of stuff. So this is just a basic how it should work um, squad and platoon attack or platoon or squad attack so that's that's how it should work like I said everything's met T dependent so there could it could have just <laughs> stopped right when they started flanking their unit they could have seen them whatever but that's how the first battle drill should look so thanks for watching Okay, um, the second battle drill I'm going to be talking over is react to contact, which is you're on a patrol, could be a squad, platoon, or recon sized patrol, um, what to do when you come under contact. So, say you're walking, la 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 la, you got your team leader, your 249 Saul, your support gunner. You got your rifleman here, rifleman back here, and your 203 rifleman, grenadier. Um, so you're walking, doing some kind of patrol or whatever, and you're staggered, little formation, and you come under contact. Enemy sees you, and they're trying to lay waste. So what you end up doing, first thing you do is take cover, return fire. Um, so when you're on patrol anyway, walking anywhere, you want to keep a lookout, not only for the enemy, but the next little spot you're going to be running to if you do come under contact. Um, so the first thing you do, find cover, return fire. So the enemy has 
you guys pin down with heavy machine gun fire, whatever, um, doing whatever, and you guys are returning fire also, the best you can. First thing you do is, the well, not the first, but after you have um, found cover and returned fire, these guys, your 203, two or three gunners and your rifleman your saw gunner if he can he'll move up and this will be the command from the team leader or your squad leader or whoever's leading the patrol to get online so you have your you're setting up your little base of fire to return the fire and this is when all hell breaks loose, you want them to think that you guys are a freaking company size element, but you're just the very beginning. You are throwing every single armament, um, grenades, 203s, heavy machine gun fire from your 240 or um, 249 saw, whatever you can to make them think that they just fucked up. Um, that they just engaged a company or battalion size element. Um, now, all that is your reaction to contact. You want, it's called shock force or the mad minute. Um, you're doing everything you can to think that they um, just screwed up, basically. Um, so getting into, um, breaking contact or, um, stuff like that, that's pretty much as far as it goes to react to contact. Um, from this point, all you're doing is laying waste, trying to lay waste before they destroy your whole little unit or whatever. Now this, at this point, the, your team leader we'll call either reinforcements to help engage uh, the enemy. Now if you're if you're just the first team in the squad this is when you know you'll have uh, your other element will try to flank the either flank left or flank right to get a better angle on the um, to the enemy to uh, to eliminate them as fast as possible, um, but that's really that's all it really goes into. Um, just your initial reaction to contact. Okay, so the third video I'm going to do is break contact. Um, say you know you're you were on patrol you you've been ambushed, you've already reacted to contact and react to ambush, which I haven't got to yet, but I will. Um, breaking contact, you just can't sustain the proper amount of firepower um, to gain fire superiority. You're just a recon patrol or your element, you've taken heavy casualties or something, something happened where you can't be combat effective. So some one of the steps you might want to consider is um, starting bounding your half your team or half your squad back at a time. Um, so the team leader and the 240 um, or your saw gunner or something like that will try to help maintain that base of fire um, while your 203 gunner or your Alpha or Bravo team or two or three gunner rifle gunner will start to move back. And you'll have SOPs and stuff where you'll either say Bravo team or Alpha team um, prepare to move, bound back, whatever. Um, team leader will give the command to move they'll say moving 
and then they'll push back 15, 20 yards, meters, whatever. Gain that base of fire, start returning fire so this other element can move back also. So, team leader will gain the, his element will start to move back. Two four nine or two forty, they will also move back in unison to regain that base of fire that they initially had. So, and this will continue as fast and as accurate as possible. So, what is going to eventually happen? Hopefully, if you're just you know small recon team or something like that you're just going to keep pushing back half your team at a time they'll you know start returning fire once they um, are set then the other part of the element will move back get online return fire and then just bound back half by half um, and hopefully you'll you'll gain enough dis distance between the enemy and you you'll be able to totally break contact and start tactically you know running away <laughs> um, so that really is all that breaking contact either um, you know getting back with your main unit or something like that and then doing the whole flanking maneuvers and all that jazz to regain supplier sub fire superiority and um, eliminate the enemy but if you're in a situation where there's you cannot gain fire superiority get out of there there's in war and firefights it's either you or them and if you're in a really bad situation fuck that you know get out of there return to fight another day or with more people so that's all I got for you on uh, Battle Drill 3, Break Contact. Okay, so next video I'm going to do is Battle Drill 4, which is React to, react to Ambush. Um, react to Ambush is a little bit different because it's within 30 to 35 meters um, of the enemy. So you are definitely within hand grenade range, and so are they. So, once the initial um, ambush happens, everybody scoots up and gets online, just like every other battle drill, um, to try and gain fire superiority and uh, maintain a base of fire. And at this point, you're throwing everything, hand grenades, 203s, smoke, whatever you're able to do and whatever you're able to throw at them to gain fire superiority and try and destroy them as fast as possible. So that happens. Now you've gained fire superiority. Now you're with a, say you're with a squad or something like that. When you're in a position like this, there's nothing else really to do except stay and fight. Um, you can try and break contact or something, but most likely it'll end in a lot of casualties and stuff like that. So either way, you're kind of screwed. Um, but on, in this situation, it's best case scenario. So you get your other squad or platoon or team to either flank left or right. And by then that time they're gonna be all online they'll get online as best as possible and start doing the same thing hand grenades 203s 240s 249s um, precision rifles whatever they have at their dispo ex disposal and just lighting everything up you know aiming shooting this way try and get squirters or something like that um, and trying to cover as much area as possible. So by this time you radio up to either your team on the left or right 
to shift fire and all their fire is going to be pushed north of your their position um or you know northwest or whatever um so they're not shooting you when you push through the objective so your whole team moves up and by this time hopefully the enemy positions will either be knocked out or destroyed and you start once you get up right to the edge of them it's either shift fire or cease fire all together so they're not whacking you when you push through the objective so say I don't know cease fire except you know 240 on the end or whatever and he's just trying to gain that fire um, you know maintain that base of fire so cease fire and your team pushes through the objective cease fire you know the whole platoon or squad or whatever and this is you know just just like the all the other the battle drill um, one squad attack platoon attack they send out their LOA which is line of advance where they will stop and your other team will push through the objective also checking for casualties all that good stuff um, and setting up their LOA on the other side to just get rid of um, either capture or kill whoever's remaining check for their own casualties kill um, KIAs and all that stuff and secure this whole enemy position so that is react to ambush um, now if you're in a position where you got ambushed and it is within 15 20 meters or something like that it's it's hard to say if you have a small element or something most likely you'll get rolled up um, but by then if you would probably just have to stay and fight and hope for the best so that's react to ambush um, real close up you know muzzle to muzzle almost fighting which is something you would not want to be in so that's all I got for battle drill 4 Thanks for watching. Hey guys, the fifth battle drill I want to talk to you guys about is um, knocking out a bunker. Um, now this is just a random bunker, maybe out on the outskirts of a um, like the an enemy's position or something, or on their like way left or right flank or something so um, or just some random little patrol so they have a machine gun bunker and they're laying down rounds um, they open up on your position um, just like everything else your leading element will get online and start returning fire trying to gain that fire superiority so at this time um, either your squad t squad leader um, PL or whoever um, may be in charge is gonna take that time to assess the situation and um, maneuver their Alpha or Bravo team into position to knock knock the bunker out so in this case um, the your squad leader tells your um, Alpha or Bravo team to flank left or right so that's what they do. They go all the way around, just like everything else. And they get online, trying to, you know, and flanking. One of the things is you could be going 100 to 300 yards out, you know, going around the enemy's position if, you know, it's going to be if you have a good force here to lay down a base of fire and have them concentrate on you um, so flanking is no joke it's it's gonna it could be a long haul if you're in a urban environment it'll usually be smaller amounts of distances but in this case it's it could be further distances just to let you know um, 
so they get in position where they can kind of find some um, cover and concealment without being um, caught. So the, what they'll do is they'll move up as close as possible to the enemy position. And at the back of the entrance and exit of the machine gun bunker, you'll have some people pulling security on that um, entrance and exit in case there's somebody that comes out squirters or something. You also also want guys to be pulling security else other places, you know, just out here in the space. You know, just to have somebody pulling security in case there's another surprise element or something. So, best case scenario, these are. So, at this time, the team leader and one or two guys will come up, pull security on that machine gun window, just in case somebody tries to peek out or do something. They will prime that hand grenade or some kind of explosive, and while they're having security on this machine gun window, they'll throw that grenade in, hopefully killing you know, all occupants inside, best case scenario. So it's all good. Everybody's dead in the machine gun bunker. So they will they will scoot back, get online, pull security where necessary. Now your your element, I forgot when they're going into um shooting or when they go up to the machine gun bunker to prime and throw that grenade in there, um, your support element is going to be giving the si given the signal to cease or shift fire. So once they're laying down rounds onto the machine gun bunker, these guys move up, tell them they're set, then they will shift fire. I forgot to mention that. So, so machine gun bunker's knocked out, they've shift fire, so what they do now is tell them the either squad leader will tell them to move up he tells them to cease fire or whatever squad leader will tell the um, support team to move through the objective just like everything else they will set up their LOA their limit of limit of limit of advance or line of advance whichever you prefer the squad leader will move up with them to the bunker, ensuring everything is cleared. All occupants are either dead or detained. Um, they will call out their LOA. Now your flanking element will move across the objective also, crisscrossing through the objective, and set up their LOA. So, once again, everything's clear. That's when your team leaders or squad leaders are going to go through, make sure nobody's hurt, injured, how much ammo, how much water they have. Then, um, if necessary, all the POW teams and aid and litter teams will go through the objective and do their whole assessments and stuff. So, basic, basic stuff, how to knock out a bunker. Thanks for watching. Bye. Hey guys, welcome back to I Like Gun. We're continuing with the eight battle drills. I know I have, haven't done that in a pretty long time, so I'm going to continue and finish it. This is battle drill six, enter and clearing a room. Um, very, very basic stuff. I'm not getting into SOPs and stuff like that, what your unit did and what Dick Face's unit did. What, who, you know, what fucking, who gives a shit? Everything's different. What you decide to do is up to you and which will be the best way to enter and clear a room, no matter what. So, I'm not looking to start arguments and stuff, this is just very basic. So, when you stack up on a door, you look at the hinges of the door and figure out which way the door is going to open. If it opens to the left, the first man decides to choose the path of least resistance. So if the door opens to the left, 
he's going to go straight in and clear this corner. Um, he will go at an angle straight in and clear this corner clear this corner first so nobody's getting shot in the you know in the back or whatever when everybody else goes in right when he sees this um, corners clear he's gonna start scanning and pieing the rest of the room as he's you know walking up through here he's gonna start shifting his um, field of view over to the room this way he will continue down this wall looking at this section of the room and he's gonna stop it at almost the corner so at the same time your second man is going to haul ass into the room and checking like actually hockey checking this door because if somebody's going to be behind it you're going to hear them squeam or squeal or whatever squirm behind the door and you're going to fucking take their asses out if necessary so your second man will button hook clear this corner just like the first man he'll clear the corner and start pying the rest of the room so he'll walk in here will not walk but slow steady steady is fast kind of deal clear this corner when he when this corner is clear he's gonna start pying this top corner up here and then the rest of the room up into this first man because everything else is cleared so he looks he gets over here that corner is clear and starts pieing the rest of the room make sure nobody is nobody else is you know visible and he will stop just short of the first man's position on the opposite side of the uh, room now mind you this is all moving very fast when you guys um, go into a room you're all four moving at once you're not taking your time for the first man to get in then the second man then the third and fourth no it's gonna be a gaggle fuck for a second um, you guys are gonna be tripping on each other on each other's heels until you guys really start getting it down and you train and train and train this through your fucking skulls um, it's gonna be a gaggle fuck it still is it still was when we did it you know we still tripped over shit and stepped on stuff and had to jump over couches and all kinds of shit so um, it's gonna be hectic at first but the the idea is to get as many muzzles in the doorway through the fatal funnel which is a doorway um, as fast as possible and as accurate as as possible so by the time the first and second man are going to these corners the idea is to have your third and fourth guy already coming through the doorway so they can clear at their 12 o'clock from here to here well a little bit down because these guys won't be up here so more at an angle like this so they kind of clear the rest of the rooms to in case there are people be over here or back in a room that's coming through a doorway or something um, the idea is they will be able to take them out before the first or second guy gets taken out theoretically so the third guy will come in he will clear he will follow the path of the first man so it's opposites first and third second and fourth um, he will come in still fixated to their 12 clock at about close to that and he will sidestep this way and stop about here because he doesn't have to clear this corner because it was already cleared by the number one man so the third man will come in sidestep clear sidestep to the right or the way of the number one man went 
and start cleaning the rest of the room. As the third man is going in, your fourth man will be following him and he will button hook left. And he will start clearing the rest of the room with the number third man. So the idea is you're getting as many muzzles into the room through that doorway to s help secure and light up the room if it's nighttime so people can see what the fuck's going on if there is a active shooter or pr you know enemy presence in there you're going to be able to illuminate them and take them out so by the end of it when all three or four guys or five guys if necessary um, is in the room and the room's cleared these back corners here in the sides of the walls are going to be n nobody's going to be focused on them so you could because you don't want to um, flag the other guys so the middle and the back end of the wall is really the only places that are going to be you going to be holding security on now one either the third or fourth man can break security turn their muzzles to the ground or up whichever and one of them will start pulling security on the doorway so if you don't have any other elements behind you if somebody else comes into that door without saying hey fucking captain dickface is coming in um, you're gonna let him have it because you don't know who the fuck it is so I know it's kind of thrown together kinda of shittily um, I just want wanted you to give get some kind of an idea of what it should look like now doing it on paper on a dry erase board is nothing compared to actually doing it when I first got to my unit I was usually the second man the first man is usually your team leader and <clears throat> I didn't know what the fuck I was doing I kept following him because usually that's what you do and it's it was totally different and I got my ass reamed because I just kept following him because you know being some fucking cherry ass kid you followed everybody in this, in this scenario, in this case, it's totally different. So it's just getting used to it and actually doing this in person to get it down so you can, if, you, if necessary, if you're defending your home or whatever the case may be, um, you're able to do this effectively and efficient, efficiency, efficiently without getting your ass killed while killing you know, the enemy. So thanks again for watching. Take care.